Hi everybody, we have five packs open of the Uncanny X-Men Dice Masters boosters. There's Alakai. Let's uh, go ahead and crack them open. First off, we have a She-Hulk. Jennifer Walters, five Fist Energy Avenger. If She-Hulk is blocked, spin her up one level. She's very strong. She's a common. And then we have common Mystique. Three and a mask villain. Mystique gets plus one attack, plus one defense for each die in your prep area. Pretty strong. Good cards. Okay, let's go on to uh, pack number two. So we get. I'm looking for a Psylocke Quinnon, the assassin. I'm hoping that she comes in and <laughs> I cannot believe I just said that and I just pulled her right now. Um, I swear that was uh, close. I just saw the die. Um, Psylocke Quinnon, the assassin, two in a mask. When fielded, you may pay mask mask to knock out one character. Boom, she comes in and she just kills something right off the bat. It's great. Um, I'm really considering to put her in the deck instead of um, Beast. Mutant 666, uh, there's way too many people who are looking for that creature, and she comes in, she just knocks it out. But unfortunately, she costs mask and a mask, which actually could hurt me in the, well, she <laughs> could actually hurt me for that card right there, Professor X, recruiting young mutants. Um, when fielded, search your bag for up to two sidekick dice and roll them. But this is the global that everybody's playing. I just saw in a tournament today, um, this was everywhere. This was absolutely everywhere. Pay a mask, move up to two sidekick dice from your hand, use pile to your prep area. I um, I did a brief uh, tutorial or discussion about Professor X in the past video, in the first video I think I did. I need to go back and revisit it and probably dedicate another um, entire episode to it because uh, there's actually a lot of idiosyncrasies that are not very well explained in the um, in the official rules. So um, things that are kind of expected in a tournament scene that uh, really need to go over for people who are just starting out. So excited. Got a rare. And I called it. <laughs> Here's the third pack. And boom. Kitty Pride. Just a phase. Five in a mask. When Kitty Pride is blocked, you may pay a mass to move one character blocking her out of the attack zone. It remains in the field. Kitty Pride remains blocked. Very similar to um, magic. When a creature is called blocked, it remains blocked. Then we have Black Panther Wakanda Chief, four and a fist and a vendor. Black Panther can only be attacked if your opponent has a character in the field. I have pulled a lot of these in this box. A lot. These things are all over the place. I like to die, but geez, there's a lot of them. Fourth pack. See Captain America. Scarlet Witch, awesome rare again. Unity Squad, three and a bolt. This is an Avenger. On the turn after Scarlet Witch is fielded, you may make your opponent re roll one die from his initial roll before he rolls it, re rolls a dice. Wow, that's a. Uh, it's pretty sexist <laughs> from his initial rule. It says his all over the place there, but uh, cool, rare, not too bad. And then Captain America's special ops. Five in a shield, Avenger, when fielded, move an opposing villain to the prep area. Saw a lot of people playing Captain America today just all over the place. We're going to talk about the uh, tournament, some of, this, kind of some things I saw. It's pretty cool. Here's a fifth pack. I don't think I've ever seen that. Oh, that's Juggernaut. I'm not sure what that one is. Boom. Oh, no, it's not Juggernaut. It's Toad. While Toad is active, each opposing non sidekick character must attack. If legal. Removal. If I have a fist, a villain. Um, and I've gotten, I've gotten a lot of those too. And then it's Marvel Girl. Telekinesis. Tele telekinetic. When fielded, spin each opposing character down one level if able. Six and a bolt. X Men. Not too bad. In the five packs we pulled, we got two rares. That's pretty cool. I'm kind of excited about that. And um, 
I will be going back and talking about some Professor X. And I also mentioned the tournament I was in today and kind of some of the official things that we saw. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. How you doing, everybody? This is Alakai. <clears throat> We're back talking about one of the cards we pulled today. And in this discussion, we're going to be talking about Psylocke, Quinnon the Assassin. I was very excited to get this. Um, she is an assassin. Now, one thing I didn't know about the game is that when the actual characters have a subtitle of assassin, it basically means that they're able to take out um, your opponent's characters. And they're going to be able to kill them and snipe them and whatnot. Psylocke's awesome because she's really low cost. She's two in a mask, and her ability is... When fielded, you may pay mask mass and knock out one character. Now, how awesome is that? She's got a max four. She's got some stats on there. Mostly fielding is zero zero one in that order. And again, it's Psylocke Quinnon, the assassin. Now, when do you want to use this? Well, Psylocke actually poses a little bit of a problem. You really have a little bit of a give and take there because if we have our buddies like Beast Genetic Expert, which is also two in a mask. It's a great blocker. We want to keep that 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 uh, mask energy open, or to buy a beast die to get into the game. Another reason why we want to keep a mask uh, die is for things like Professor X and his global ability, which um, we've discussed in the past. But global ability is pay a mask, move up to two sidekick dice from your use pile to your prep area. So it's ramp, right? We use the mass to ramp. So there's a lot of uses for mask, but if you find yourself in trouble, Psylocke might be the right um, character to have in your board. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. A lot of times uh, your opponents might have something like, let's say a Magneto Hellfire Club opponent uh, the uh, character ability is while Magneto is active if your opponent has no villains in the field he takes two damage each time he draws one or more dice from his bag it's pretty powerful right so every time you go and draw you're gonna take damage from that this is not somebody that uh, would normally be attacking some a lot of times they'll just keep it back if they can because they'd want to keep that active that ability active so this might be something you need to go and snipe in there with Something else that your opponents might do is play a Namor, Imperius Rex. If Namor is the only character in your field at the end of any turn, field up the two sidekick dice from your use pile or prep area. So basically what this does is another character that they probably will not want to attack with all the time. They'd probably be a little hesitant because they want to ramp, right? They want to get that extra sidekick dice. So there's another one, another reason why they're not going to attack. So you can, you're going to need to uh, take care of it. And one thing I saw today, this is really important here, are situations like this. In the new set, in Uncanny X-Men, they have heroic abilities, right? Things like if your opponent has something like Red Hulk superhero, big old beefy character, they're just swinging in, attacking with you, attacking with it, and they're just knocking everything out. If that thing is sitting in the fielded area, oh, running out of space here. Something's running in the field area. They play something like Storm. Storm's three in a mask. Again, this is your opponent. And then the heroic ability basically is like a soul bond magic. Basically it says when fielded, Storm may pair up with a different heroic character until the start of your next turn. Red Hulk is also heroic. Now when they pair up, they have these special abilities that kick in. It's a combo. In Storm's case, while Storm is paired up, she and her partner can't be targeted by action dice. Wow. So automatically, she doesn't get she, nothing can hit her. You can't do the uh, power bolt or anything to her or her partner. It's pretty strong. Red Hulk is heroic. So now they're paired up. He gets his two. When Red Hulk is paired up, he and his partner each gain three attack. What? He's already at six, seven, and eight down here in the levels. This guy is alone swinging for eleven, and she's gonna swing in for six. That's seventeen, guys. That's crazy. Anyways, um, I have also seen Captain America, who gives I think it's a plus three. So uh, you're gonna take a uh, Red Hulk plus three plus an additional. From uh, Captain America, they're both uh, um, high power boosters, so 
got to be careful for that. So if you see a red hulk on the field zone, and uh, you need to get rid of it, you need to get rid of it pretty quick because you got to be careful that they're not trying to ramp into something like a trying to hold something back for a heroic alpha strike. So an assassin card like this might be the way to go. Low cost, high power, highly recommend it. Just be cautious of what you're going to be using that mouse for and what you can use that mouse for. But in some cases, it might be the best way for you to help get through to the next level of the game. Okay, thanks guys. Talk to you later. Bye.